What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to HTS Pro Talk, your weekly... Jeez, see, my voice is already fucking gone. Whoa. Your weekly Halo Esports podcast. This is episode 364 for the week of... That is the incorrect week. It's November 10th. <laughs> the week of November 10th, <laughs> 2024. Jesus Christ, I'm so out of it right now. The title of this week's episode is Grassroots Leveling Up. Get it? LVL leveling. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What was that? You fucking record skipping over there? What was that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. The Discord delay, man. You were still like <laughs> talking a little bit. And fucking like, wiggity wiggity whack, this dude. Not, <laughs> this is fucking me up. My name is Josh, aka JK Fire. This week I'm joined by the man in the space station hoodie with the fucking jersey set up behind him. Will, aka I am Mr. Mayhem. Will, how are you doing on this Monday evening? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Yeah. Remote show today. Ronan, I did not sneeze on my camera. <laughs> I'm in a weird space. <laughs> I needed to blur the background, but it only kind of works. So that's where we're at tonight. All right. That was that's fucking what we're funny. doing. That was genuinely fucking funny. <laughs> because, well, I put my, so I have a different camera that I use for like work. And uh, it's up above the monitor over there. And I have blur for the background on. And so I'm just imagining yeah. myself in that situation. And, <laughs> and because, like, obviously everybody else has their cameras blurred too. But, like, I'll, now I'm going to fucking think about that. That was funny. That was genuinely funny. It is what it is tonight. But we're rolling with it. Holy shit. Why is well on the wrong side? This is the way it's always been for remote shows, John. Yeah. we had to, We had to flip it because of how discord does video. So like, this is how it's always been for the remote shows. I mean, you could crop two images down and then move them. Definitely not fucking doing that. I, I, it's been set up like this for months. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fair enough. Um, before we get into the actual show, before Will, before I ask you what's on this week's episode of the show, first and foremost, Mr. Danny Phantom with the 14-month resub, Wiley Diody with the five gifted subs, and Elated Dartboard with 26-month resub, you all get all woo 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 The first one almost did not happen there. The first woo almost did not fucking happen there. That was close. I am so scared for what my voice is going to sound like tomorrow. Now, granted... If I am, if I feel okay enough to go into the office tomorrow, at least I don't need to fucking talk to anybody. So I'll take that. Yeah, there's that. I will take that. God damn it. What's up, Texas guy? Welcome back as well. All right. Will, do you want to know what's on this week's episode of the show? What do we got? We have ranked in HCS get ma uh, new maps for better or worse. And then our topic of recapping one of the greatest grassroots esports tournaments. So without further ado, I think we should get right into some competitive news agla america griffball league of america signups for winter league 25 they're now open this is by play griffball and from grumpy mav in the play griffball discord they state we have heard your hunger and your cries for the return of griffball now i'm here to status to satisfy that craving i'm thrilled to announce that signups for agla wl 25 are officially open you might be thinking oh probably another draft season but wait this isn't just any season. For the first time in the Halo Infinite era, we are doing a bid season. So if you were any at all interested in joining that up, check out the link in the Google Doc in the show notes of the show, exclamation points, show notes in the chat. Next up, two new maps, Ranked Arena and HCS Update. Here we go. Now that the dust has settled, Let's talk about some changes that are coming to both Ranked Arena and the HCS map pool for off-season tournaments, which we'll have more specific details on later. As mentioned in the patch notes, here are the changes coming to Ranked Arena and the HCS off-season map pool. Added, Fortress CTF, three captures. Fortress Slayer, Inquisitor CTF, five captures. And Inquisitor Slayer, still no oddball. Here has what has been removed. Argyle CTF, Interference King of the Hill, Interference Slayer, and Interference Strongholds. We are very excited to have two new maps entering the Ranked Arena playlist. Fortress, created by Mick Rips and Ethan Hibbs, is an original design. Inquisitor, which was created by Unique, is based on the iconic Halo 2 map, Midship. 
These fast-paced maps are available now in all ranked playlists, and you can compete on them in the HCS off-season tournaments. HCS off-season tournament dates and times will be announced later. We'll be keeping a close eye on how Inquisitor and Fortress perform both in ranked arena and in the HCS off-season tournaments to help determine which game types are best suited for the HCS year four map pool. So, basically, what is being said here, Will, is that these are what is happening, this is what is happening within the HCS for the off-season, but is not guaranteed to be the way that it is going into year four. So we might get them as is. We might get some changes. Correct. And the reason why that is important to distinguish first up Tyler with the fucking resub. Thank you so much. You get a wow. Greatly appreciated there. The reason why this is important to note will is because, and I know that uh, you have heard of, uh, you have heard of this. I know that folks on Xbox have been um, speaking their concerns about this, but I want to talk about what Shio had stated. Um, this is from the HRL discord. He states, FYI, for those worrying, uh, wondering about the maps, HRL typically waits three weeks for new maps before adding them into the pool. However, that would take us to playoffs, so the map pool would remain unchanged until Season 14. Also, there's various midship performance issues on Xbox, so fingers crossed those get fixed. So yes, what he is discussing is the um, Inquisitor, the midship remake. There are massive performance issues on Xbox consoles. And Will, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say my first experience loaded in and I had the texture glitch. I couldn't see more than three feet in front of my face at any given moment. And so that was on was, PC? Yes, on PC. So, uh, it, you know, on other maps, when you get the texture glitch, you can see certain areas you can walk around, but one area might give you the problem. Yeah. It was the whole map, just lines across my face the whole time. Couldn't play it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, a lot of the concerns that have been raised are about the performance issues, um, on Xbox consoles. I know that, I know that he is on, I believe you're on PC now, um, diode, but you were on Xbox previously and he was one of the people who had voiced concerns as well. Um, and seen a lot of takes on Twitter too. So hopefully things are able to get smoothed out. Um, especially before these off season tournaments kick off. And the one thing I do want to say is for a scene that has typically been in the realm will of, we'll just put it in there and then just wait, like we'll have it in for the season. And then depending upon the amount of feedback we get, we may make a change on it. Right. Um, I am liking the verbiage that they're including in this article saying that this is the way that it's going to be for off season tournaments, taking the feedback from those and then potentially making necessary changes in preparation for the official season kicking off. Yeah. It, it all comes to follow through on that though. At this point, Agreed. um, history has shown we've had the maps thrown in and left as is. And I mean, even these maps coming to ranked, we were told, what summer of 24 Collie's still not here. Yeah. And, and it's it past the summer. After, you know, yeah, it's fall. It's it fall. It feels like winter almost here now. Sometimes. Yeah. So it's all about that execution moving forward. Yeah. Agreed. Just, I, I just like how they're actually putting a statement out there though. You know, not leaving it up to, to speculation at this point. So I'll, t I'll take anything we can get at this point. I just like, I like how there's a little bit more communication here from this front, not just, Hey, we're going to throw this in here. It's middle of the season. Good luck. Right. So very happy about that. Yeah. Can, uh, continuing on. We also have a couple of maps exiting the ranked arena map pool, Argyle and interference based on player feedback and data that showed the game types were not performing up to the quality bar. We'd like, we decided to remove these four game types and reevaluate each map to see what can be improved for potential future use. This also means that Argyle CTF and interference strongholds will be no longer part of the HCS map pool. A huge thank you. A huge thank you to Astro CSF, the creator of interference for working with us to get us the, to get the first community made forge map into the HCS. Um, 
So yeah, there you go. Um, Argyle was kind of growing on me as time went on, mm-hmm. but uh, looking back, it still didn't feel smooth. Like it didn't feel like a good game flow to play Argyle flag. While I liked it, it just there it was it was it felt clunky at times. Yeah, I mean, I already talked about my issues. I don't know if issues mm-hmm. is the right word, but like just you know, my thoughts on Argyle in the pool was that I I thought it just played too slow. Um, either either you had games that ended like you had a game that a team would get rolled, or you'd have it it basically go to overtime or reset every time. Like, mm-hmm. or, or it would be one Oh at the end of the game. And I'm like, why wow, this is just there. Yes. There are great plays that can happen throughout. Don't get me wrong, but it just feels way too fucking slow for me personally. Um, Riz says, remove the pit and put back in Argyle. No, I just like the pit. Fuck me. You know what I mean? Um, I'd be fine with the pit being gone. <laughs> I know a lot of people would. I know a lot of people would. What's up, Riddim? Welcome back. Good to see you. Uh, Topher says, or would have players manipulate mechanics of the map. Topher, would you mind, uh, like explaining a little further on that? I'm curious. Oh, but, uh, interference strongholds will gone. Thankfully. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I'm with you on that one. I'm, I'm happy. This one is gone as well. Too snowbally of a map as well. They tried to, they tried to fix it from solitude, but just didn't happen. So what are you going to do? No, it's, um, I was, I saw some H5 stuff the other day mm. with the maps, you know, Plaza, inner, well, the rig. Yeah. And the movement in those games, the angles, the way the game was played, it just, it worked a lot better in that game. Yeah. And with the way Infinite plays those two maps, I mean, Solitude's still in for Slayer, but. Mm-hmm. But not for, uh, yeah, but, but that's just Not ranked. King of the Hill. That's just yeah. ranked specifically. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, um, we'll, we'll have to see if that Kali remake comes in and how it'll play with infinite yep. at, at a pro level, very high level. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'm glad interference is gone. Same here. Um, there, so my, well, we've talked about this ad nauseum, like for months and years at this point is that me personally, like I would love new experiences. Like, obviously I'm a big pit fan. Like I joked right there earlier, Riz, that no, I don't want the fucking pit gone. I love the pit. But in all seriousness, if we just had straight up new experiences that that were made for the game that we're playing, instead of trying to bring back these maps and rehash them to try to work for the game that we're playing. And that's not to say that these maps are not bad. Like I mean, it's you know, it's not to say these maps are bad because they're not. Like they're not bad maps. They just don't perform well for the hyper competitive nature of the scene that we're paying attention to, you know? So that's why I'm curious if we are going to get that, uh, that call remake because in a bubble, it sounds like a great idea. I love call from H five. It's my favorite H five. It's my favorite H five map. But if it comes over to this game, does it translate well enough? And that's, that's what I'm curious about. So have you, Question for you though: Have you dived into? Maybe this is a Will's Adventures question, but fucking, I'm asking you now. Um, have you been dibble dabbling with the the two new additions that have been made, the midship remake and the fortress? Um, not if it comes up in the ranked playlist. That's all I've been really doing lately. Um, do you feel they play okay, or what are your what are your initial thoughts right now? I'm sorry, this is too early. I'll say this. Um, I played. So I ranked in. I ranked in plat. You know, worked my way back into diamond. Yeah, everyone does. Um, so the the game I played was Capture the Flag on Inquisitor. Okay. That was like a 4-1 or something, 5-1. Okay. So it felt a little steamrolly. It was hard to get a good grasp of what that felt like. Now... I joined up with a couple Onyx players yesterday and played Fortress, and we only got Slayer. Got Slayer twice on it. Okay. And it did not feel good. Okay. Like, um, 
It, the, the game flow was weird. Although I had a, yeah, humble brag, Ronan, I, I was outside my fucking comfort zone. I just joined up with a couple friends. Um, He's better than he says he is, by the way. Go ahead. But Will. yeah, I, I found my goal and objective was to try to control mid. Okay. There were some spots where, you know, you had coverage. That's the other thing too, is that there, there doesn't seem to be enough coverage on fortress unless you take the super long routes, which makes sense. Yeah. But like around the outside of the map. Yeah. Um, it's got, I think it, maybe it'll be better as time vibe, right? goes on. Huh? It's got that sank vibe, right? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. <clears throat> uh, I'm trippy. Thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciated. Welcome to the live show. Um, so again, I, I mean, my experience has been iffy on it, but again, I kind of want to see what happens when it gets into the really high level play. Yeah. Because we, it, for those who watched the, um, the H2 land over the weekend, you saw a lot of mid shipping play because that was one of the core, uh, competitive maps in the scene at the time. And obviously you see how well that, that plays, right? You, you can have blowouts, but you also can have very, very close games. Um, depending upon the game type that is being played on MIDI. So again, I'm, I'm curious, is it going to translate well enough to this, to the game that we're currently playing? Because like, yes, it's still halo, but every halo plays differently. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm just, I'm curious how that's going to happen. Um, prep and swag. Thank you so much for the two month resub. You get a wow. Greatly appreciated. Welcome back. So yeah, like you said, curious how these are going to play at the top level. Once these pros get more time on it. Um, and not only that, but like outside of matchmaking, once these pros actually get some time with their new teams and, like really getting strats down and everything as well. Very, very excited for that. Um, obviously so long as they play well. And I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that. Did yeah. you feel, did you feel with fortress? I know you said you only got slayer, but I am curious. Did you feel with fortress that it was okay with the two snipes? Yeah. Okay. I felt like it was okay. Okay. Not, not to say it wouldn't be, but like, I'm curious because that is it to me, it looks like a sank type experience that has two snipers. Obviously it is a symmetrical map. So good to yeah. know. When will live fire get a remake? Get the fuck out of here, Ronan. Jesus Christ. All right. Thank you very much for those thoughts. Well, I appreciate it. Oh, of course. And of course. that's actually going to do it for the competitive news. <laughs> Which means, Will, it's time for Roster Mania! Yeah, some Roster Mania. Couple of pieces here, I guess you'd say. First off, Reverb steps away from competing and put out a statement that says, It greatly pains me to say it, but for now I'm going to stop competing in Halo. There are countless reasons for this decision, like the state of the game, health of the scene, and other aspirations I have for myself outside of the game. I've proven myself plenty and I have more to give, but I can't justify the time sink in my life right now, especially with the amount of time it takes to be a proper competitor. As many of you know, it was quite a difficult, it was quite difficult competing for the last seven plus months with an advancing career. The time and mental requirements, basically zero free time and very stressful job and hobby is a bit too much. Um, he hasn't played the game since SLC. And it's been nice to get a break to get perspective on more important aspects in his life and career as a whole. I feel as though I can be proud of everything I accomplished in competitive Halo, like being a number one FFA player, winning a LAN 2v2, or achieving consistently high AM placings with one of the longest running teams in Halo Infinite. Best team I've ever been on, and those guys deserve nothing but the best and most committed teammates. And I can't give it my all in season four. Teammates for life, shout out to them. It's been an honor and pleasure to compete against the best teams and grow as a person and a competitor alongside bonding with everyone in the community who share the same passions for Halo and competitive gaming. I love Halo and I always will, but it feels like, at least for now, I need to put this dream to rest. Thank you to every team org I've been a part of, all my teammates and fellow competitors, and all the friends I made along the way. I'll still be around gaming and possibly streaming, so please feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for reading. Uh, again, reverbed. 
Best of luck to you, Reverbed. <clears throat> Next up, Complexity officially releases Rain and Ryan Noob. And then Ryan Noob put out a statement and said, appreciate my time under Complexity. I had a solid season, free agent for next season. And then a little dark inside news. Mm -hmm. They signed Gun Goddess as a content creator. They're making moves out there. Shout Let's go. Out. Shout out. And see, they're making they're making good moves. They're not just making moves, Will. They're making good moves. They're making yeah. wholesome moves. They're making quality fucking moves. Shout out Haley. Shout out Dark Inside. Fucking Goddamn. Let's go. Let's fucking go. All yeah, right. That well, does it for Ross Romani, man. Thank you very That's much. That's all we got this week. I appreciate it. Uh feel like I'm hanging on by a goddamn thread. Um, we don't have upcoming or recaps. Instead, we're going to head right into our motherfucking topic of the show this week, which is a recap of a tournament. As a matter of fact, it is the level 50 Halo 2 Las Vegas land results. Um, got some clips we're going to show here, which is going to give me an opportunity to shut the fuck up so we can watch some goddamn amazing Halo 2 being played. And then we can talk about things as they happen as well. But Will, before we get started with the first uh, clip here that I want to show, would you please do me a favor and uh, give us the results there of the Halo CE 2v2 because oh may see a very special I, name. Yes, I'm excited results. for this one. Me too. Go for it. All right. Fourth place for the Halo CE 2v2 at level 50. Halo 2, Lan, Las Vegas, Lan. Uh, fourth went to Team Utah, which was quarantined in Hasuku. Third went to Team Canada, which was Vinny and Silos. Wait, Let's go, on. Silos. Got to get the fucking... <laughs> There you go. You got to get the shout outs in there too. Congratulations, uh, Silos. Fucking love yes, you, man. Yes, huge. Uh, second went to VGA Legends, which was Mac and Jordy. And taking it home was Team Call. Call, com, call, because uh, that complexity, I don't know. Kaiser and Kabi, I don't know what they were going for. It's okay. I, I, initially, I thought it was also like. Complexity. Yeah, but obviously yeah. that's not what it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's up, Martin? Welcome back. Columbia. Columbia Voodoo Man says, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Oh, my God. Me and names. You know, it's just, it's bad. <laughs> no, it's it's the staple of the show, though. You know, if people don't understand know, that's what I they're know. getting, then they're the fucking ones that don't. Yeah, you know. Fuck them. <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, man. Shit. <laughs> and then, do you want me to go over the FFA as well? Um, actually, before we do that, we do have a clip here I want to show off. I want to show the last two minutes of this FFA because if people look at the show notes or um, wait until Will reads through the results, you will see that a lot of these placings are very, very, very close mm. in this top eight. So without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to the screen here. We're going to watch the final two minutes of the Halo 2 FFA, which happened on the Friday before the tournament officially kicked off, because for those who do not recall, um, the the FFA was used for seeding for the four v four. Okay, oh. so it was a very very cool thing happening here. Um, I hope this is the right button. I really hope this is the right. I think it's the right button, but I hope it's the right button. We're gonna find out. It was the right button. We're good. Here we go. Let's Three, go. two, one. Here's the last two minutes of the Halo 2 FFA. Shot 43, Roy 43, Havoc 42. Two players at 41 as well, by the way. Like, still anyone's game. Absolutely. Let's take a look. Stormy on 42. Lon is on 41. Man, anyone in that top five can still take this game on a double kill. I mean, you got six place at 38. Six kills separate in the lobby, basically. Tim Rager, the only one outside of contention oh, for nice. the moment. Gunshot makes another crucial kill on Havoc. Havoc went for it, too. Havoc probably could have tucked into the car corner, but instead tries to outshoot. I like that play. Better to get back on the map somewhere else. Good steal. Oh, that's big here. Yeah. Nice timing for Monas. He's got another player, P3, and knows the spots will be coming. Can't get out in time, but it's enough to take over first for a moment. Gunshot in second. Stormy right there with him. Moves up to third. This is wild. 75 seconds left on the clock. One good spawn, though, and you find a pocket of players that are just kicking oh, yeah. the hell out of each other. Like, they're all one shot, you pick up a double. It's so pivotal at scoreboards like this. Ooh, good shots from Prawn. Two extra shots. It's a big play, though. Can we talk end. about Monas for a second? The man's at 47. He was in sixth place at yep. three minutes. 
We are down to the final 50 seconds. That's all he has to hold for. He also did really well to make sure he got some extra damage in the gunshot there to keep him at bay. But now, just like that, 47-46, it's a one-kill game. Stormy here at 45, tied with Roy for third. 43 seconds left. Three kills separate our top four. 40 Ooh, seconds on the clock. Oh, doesn't get it, does The melee is too far away, oh. and Gunshot survives with P2 power position oh. in the top spot. 47 kills to his name. 30 seconds to go here for the man who's won back-to-back. -back. Stormy gets the kill, though. Gunshot does not get to get it. Oh. He shows him. Stormy oh. goes into the lead with a huge double kill. 20 seconds left. Roy's still in it as well. He's going to answer from top car. Tied with Monas for third. Two kills separating third from first, and you can see he continues to score. 50 kills and six seconds to go. Can Monas finish it? Prana's gonna fall. He's got 48. Can he catch up? It's not gonna happen. Ladies and gentlemen, Stormy V2 edges out Gunshot and Monas. 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, <laughs> 45. It does. So, yeah, there you fucking go. What a fuck. What an insane last two minutes of that FFA. Just the fact, Will, please go ahead and read through the results one more time. There. Yeah, yeah. So if you didn't catch the scoreboard at the end there, eighth place went to Tim Rager with 40 kills. Seventh went to Prawn with 45. Havoc in sixth with 45. Fifth went to uh, trying to step with 46. Fourth went to Roy with 47. Third, Manas with 48. Second, gunshot with 49, and first was Stormy with 50. Insane. In fucking sane. In fucking sane. And the fact that two of the, the top two players in that lobby were on the same team as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that might bode well for them going into the actual 4v4, and spoiler alert, it did. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, that's that. What. Part of me was wondering going into this event will like, obviously we have some of the biggest old heads ever. Like some of the greatest halo two players of all time competing at this event. Right. But they haven't, yeah. but they haven't necessarily been putting in the time leading into this event where you have a lot of these players from the real ones, um, discord from the real ones clan, um, that LVT team being one of them, obviously, and they've been grinding. They've been putting in the work. So my my thought going into this event was, how close are these games going to be? Like, are we going to see, like, are we going to genuinely see close games taking place? Or are we going to see some of these older players just snap right back into their groove and kind of dominate? Are we going to see these players that have been grinding dominate? Obviously, the latter was true here. But, uh... I was curious because we haven't had one of these events in God fucking knows how long at this point. And we kind of haven't had one like it before on this scale, on this type of scale. So lo and behold, we had, we did have some amazingly close games and I love how it all fucking started. It all culminated uh, with this FFA on Friday leading into this four V four. So if, if this was an indication of how the rest of the tournament was going to go, I was all fucking for it. And moving on to the championship bracket, because there are some things, there are some things that we got to, we got to watch over again. We got to talk about briefly here. So some serious moments for you in the loser semifinal Zanada went up against Oats overnight. Xanada eventually eliminated Oats oh, Overnight 3-2. to two. But the moment here that I want to show is from the Game 5 Slayer on Lockout. After being up 7 kills throughout the game, Oats oh, Overnight nearly completed the comeback, getting snipe control while still being down 3 kills, 38-41. to 41. After nearly a 2-minute standoff, Oats oh, Overnight need to make their move with only a minute 13 left on the clock, and neighbor with the snipe in hand. And it all came down to this. Five shots left. Five shots down by three and 111 left. Entirely still possible. Now Mason Cobb game in his hands. What can the man do? Going to rotate a sniper angle here. 
Five shots in a dream here. Who is it? There's a minute left remaining now. This is going to be their the time library. to push, but the problem is, Benita, at least, even if I don't get a kill, get some damage on one of the players in order to go across, which he's actually doing now with the snipe. So this is all in neighbors' hands now, going up the open map. He's crazy! He's looking for another! He's hungry! He's got Zilch in the back! One shot, one goes in for the push! 44-41! Where's the Sniper's team? down back BR tower! You got someone BR3, but the kill comes through. It's still gonna be a three game, three kill game here between the both. Did Sniper fall through the hole or is it still on open ramp? That's the question. Not only down by two now, 45-43. Dorty's on the way. Dorty gets killed! 20 seconds. 20 seconds left. Oh, 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 on close ramp as well. Now still three in it. Close 15 seconds ball. left. This is absolutely insane. Gosami goes down 48 44, but the 49 goes through, and that's oh, gonna do it. Zanino picks up the win. They move forward to the elimination finals. Hun so, yeah, they, they needed to make a push. They couldn't, they couldn't just wait there for the whole fucking game, you know? They were there for two whole minutes. And then they're like, all right, we got we got to fucking go at some point in time, guys. And then they tried, and they tried valiantly, but they just were not able to close it out. Uh, Zanada just, you know, staying on top throughout the whole game there and taking home that W. Good for them. Yeah. Eliminating, again, eliminating some fucking legends in the scene. So that was a really, really cool thing to see there. The other thing I want to point out, and this is strictly an observation, okay? And this is no, like, I don't mean anything against any of the, any, like, anybody that was doing it. It's just, a, it's just an observation, okay, Will? Okay. If anybody goes back and watches these VODs, VODs are included in the Google Doc of the show. It's the show, by the way, exclamation point, show notes and chat. But if you, if you go back and watch some of these VODs, pay attention to some of the players' face cams and just watch as there are a few standout players who just have their mouth agape the whole time. Like, just mouth open the whole fucking time. And, you know, when you were watching at home, you may not have been fucking paying attention. You may not have cared. But I'm telling you, you go back and watch now, it's the only thing you're going to be able to pay attention to. I'm telling you. And uh, you, you can watch Ace in that last clip we just played because he's one of them. And it was just, I fucking was watching these. is hilarious. This is fucking funny. Oh my god. Holy shit. What's up, Juan? Welcome back. Verb says the mouth open thing was strange. It was just funny. It was just fucking funny to see because it was just like, again, you don't necessarily pay attention to it all the time, but as soon as I saw it one time, I couldn't stop seeing it. Like, I couldn't stop watching it. I'm like, when are they going to close their mouth? And then, you know, when they close their mouth, they close their mouth when they die. When they're not locked in anymore <laughs> for that split second, they're like, oh, shit. Like, it's every single time. Oh, my God. <clears throat> oh, what's up, Beth? How's it going? Holy moly. All right. Let's keep it going, huh? Holy shit. Hanging on by a thread here. Um, okay, in the loser's final, I have two things I want to show here. Um, or actually three. Hold on. Am I dumb? I think I'm dumb. Is it the same thing linked twice? No. There are two separate uh, plays in there because there's such a long standoff in between. Uh. Give me give me un, uno momento, por favor. Because I'm just going to open both of them again. And that way I don't miss them. Try. One second, please. There we go. Okay. Back to it. All right. Next one I want to show off here was game four in the losers final. This was Xanada versus final instinct. Xanada would end up winning the series three to two. So another game five banger. Um, game four was CTF on Warlock down 0 to 3 with only two minutes left in regulation. So for those who don't know how capture the flag works in Halo 2 is that like the, the difference between, and I know this is a fucking giant time leap here, but bear with me 
for those who don't know the difference between like a Halo 2 CTF versus a Halo Infinite CTF, in Halo 2, you would have a massive amount of time on a clock, right? On the game clock. And there would only be a certain amount of time in that clock for regulation. Okay. So as soon as 15 minutes were on the clock, you were technically in over, you were in overtime. Okay. And at that point, it is a sudden death overtime. Okay. To where infinite, if nobody scores or if it's one, one by the end of the game clock, the game will reset. Right. And it'll be a sudden death overtime at that point. Okay. With a brand new clock, but with halo two, you would have a giant game clock. And then once you got to 15 minutes, you'd be in overtime. It'd be sudden death. There you go. Okay. So you basically just keep playing. There's no, like no reset. You don't have brand new setups again. It's like, you just keep playing. Okay. So the reason why that's important to note is because there are only two minutes left in regulation and final instinct are down. zero to three. They need three flag caps on warlock to tie in two minutes. Final Instinct needed to hit Final Form to attempt to bring this game back. And holy shit, guys. They actually did it. Trying to end this one, really just secure it with four caps. I mean, they've already secured it with a three. But if they're able to get themselves the fourth one there, that could be massive for those guys and the confidence going into map five. I mean, we saw a late comeback in the midship flag game from Final Instinct, and maybe they can try something here again. One minute 44 left. It's doable if you're flawless. But let's be real, it's going to be going to a game five and both flag game types going in favor of Xanadu. So perhaps a little bit of a weakness for Final Instinct if they do lose this one. But there's Ooh. the first, so yeah. don't count them out just yet. They have a tendency to do these late game comebacks, but... It, sometimes, it, well, and I would say in the times we've seen it so far, it has not really panned out for them the way that they would have wanted. And instead, it's going to lead to a counter cap on the other side. As crazy he's going to bring this one across to their plat. And even though he goes down, it's still just the fact that he was able to get into that base there, uh, uh, Sims, and pull that flag out. But just as I say that, Lunchbox is looking to do the same. There's some response to it. What? This is what they need. There's some response to it. Straight There's up. The toss. Players are there. They're able to no catch shot. it. Flags. Re oh, no, it's not returned. It's still out. They got to get the re. They got to get the re, but you know what, though? That actually might not be a bad thing if they're able to do it. Just hold them for time. Well, yes, but then also, like, if, if you're you get able... Get the re, you're already over there. Yeah, you're already think, over yeah, there if true. you get the re, so yeah, that's yeah. your opportunity. Jocelyn's trying... Or sorry, Jocelyn with the donation. Apologies there. Walshy trying to make a play with the shoddy. Flag Thank you, Jocelyn, turn. for the 117 dono there. There's Flag the gets a turn! That's going to be number two! 28. Flag. Is anyone there? They've got to get a touch, throw it into overtime. If you, the flag is out when the time ticks over, we will continue. Big Great. fight here for Lunchbox. Wins it. 16 seconds. Walshy on the move. Got to dive in. You've just got to send it. 10 Come seconds, on. you've got Somebody to send it. it. Well, he's got ah, the Lunchbox goes down go, as well. Go, go, he's go, the go, one go, who was going to... Got to go. No one's there. You got to fly, but you can't get there in time. Wait, Wait. a minute. Three seconds. He, he pulls the flag. He's he says, He pulls the flag out. The flag is available to grab. Is anyone there to secure it? It's going to be Walshy. He's looking to get himself the third flag cap, but he's getting tagged and bagged. And wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. Roy grabbed it, but the portal was blocked. The portal was blocked, and the flag gets stopped. Strong side. Last player left alive. No, no freaking way. This is fucking incredible. Holy oh shit. God. What the hell? He had what is just anybody who can right. pull a rabbit it's out of a hat right. and strong side dives in, no seconds remaining, grabs the flag, pulls it, and by hook or by crook, I have no idea how, Holy they managed shit. to pull something together through all the deaths, through all the respawns. Nate's oh. even taking a swig of water. He says, all right, game on, we're back in, lock in, boys. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. But he had wow. absolutely no right, but he didn't have numbers. They already had lost the side bases. There was no support. And the fact that there was two members bad, left though. as Anadolet still, and Strongside still managed to cap that, that was ridiculous. All four dead. As Harry was saying, that was ridiculous. Um, It was fucking crazy. And it was the same play back to back, basically, that got them those two flag caps with like throwing it up, you know, to the teammate that was sitting there. Yeah. And ready to go. And just what an unfucking believable string of events that happened there. 
And the other thing, Will, like you said with the screaming, one of the things I really appreciated about this event is like because it was just purely grassroots, because it was purely, you know, volunteer work that were that was provided and it was all for the passion and the love of the game and the scene. We got to hear these the these casters and this talent like really kind of take a load off and just really say whatever the fuck they wanted and really let things fly. And as somebody who uses a lot of profanity in their language, which is what I do every day. Um, obviously I put my customer service voice on if I need to, but like, I do swear like a sailor hearing them just being able to just enjoy themselves to the fullest degree. And you get to hear the shits fly, the fucks fly, like all that stuff. And it was all, and again, it was all just passion behind everything. And when you hear, when you hear golden boy and Gaskin and Sims and Harry talking their shit there, it's like, it feels different. It really just fucking feels different. You can feel the fucking love. You can feel the passion and it's, there's nothing else quite like it, man. When you, when you see for a lot of people out there, you haven't, you haven't been able to see these guys compete in over a decade. Like there are, some of these players haven't competed in over a fucking decade and to see this team who hadn't necessarily teamed before and you hear them talking about it. And so you get the, you get these fucking goats teaming together and just seeing these moments play out on the 20th anniversary of fucking halo two. And you hear the talent just going out of their minds for these plays that are happening. There just really isn't anything else like it. And it really, I love watching HTS broadcasts. Like, do not get me wrong. Absolutely adore it. I think they do a phenomenal job. They really do. But just hearing the same talent go from a situation like that to this pure grassroots experience. It was just, Oh man, it felt good. Felt all warm and fuzzy inside. This is good shit. But, Will, that game's not over yet. Because uh, after another six-minute standoff. Yeah. Six-minute standoff. Xanada sent the series to a game five. Bunch box. A cheeky pull. He's going to send this one down. He's going to draw the attention out, but he's not going to be able to stand tall, tall here. But look at Roy. Look at Roy. It's weird and confusing him. He no idea where it is. Dropping it will oh, give away the information, but the kill's there. He'll still anchor on this point for over the moment. But wait. He's waiting for the right call when players go down. One of his teammates have fall, and he goes through the portal. Oh. The player's there. Oh. Gets the beat down. Gets the return. There's another one around the corner. Can he touch it? He doesn't oh touch it! Oh my word! He doesn't touch Side. it! Oh, oh my god! He gets the melee! The return comes in from Doherty! What a god! And Crazy's got the camo! They have eyes on Roy and he's dead! Now it's time for the flagpole! Can they succeed in doing so? Can they stop? Final instinct! Really? They need to keep an eye on Green and Yellow at the moment, bottom mid. But if I don't spawn in there, bottom mid, they need to keep tabs on it so far. Still staying alive, a double coming out from Crazy, which is going to be huge. Maybe even a triple, but it looks like Doherty's going to be coming in with He's the flag. He's got it! He manages to cap it, and we are going to a game five in the lower bracket finals. You know, I will... And the thing that I love about that is that they had such dominant control on the map for that final flag run that... Doherty's like, fuck it, I'm running the top mid, bitch. Like, yeah, check right this out, dude. <laughs> Just fucking trucked it through. Um, Yeah, Natasha, we'll, we'll be going over the results in just a little bit. Don't you worry. But yes, Tops and Waffle was the one providing them there, too. And Mr. Verb. Um, Stompy with the 11 on 3 sub. You get a woohoo! Thank you so much. And uh, Natasha, thank you for the 10 bits as well. Thank you so much. Um, Paul, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. Thank you, thank you. Last thing I want to show here before we get into the results, we'll talk about the event overall. Game 5, Slayer on midship. 
try as they might, Final Instinct are eliminated from the tournament by the hands of Xanada. This is starting to look dire straight for Final Instinct. One more up top mid. You only got four kills remaining here. That's a big kill on Zilge. Is it going to be enough to start the momentum? But the problem is you can't give anything up here for your Final Instinct. There goes a big 39th kill for them. Oh. Still nothing on the other side. We've That's seen this happen before, and you're seeing another one go down. This is not happening, people. History can't repeat itself. Roy goes oh, back there again. God. He gets another kill, but that's going to be number 47 secured. The sword, oh. he slices the dices and get nothing. He gets robbed from no sword connection at all. That's going to be the 48th kill locked in. Xanada just need two more. But Xanada have actually been trapped in this base. They can't get out yet. Even though they've got this four kill lead, they're trying to find a push, but Lightfoot's got 42. Boy's already assassinated one. And if I don't get out of this base, they're going to get completely trapped. They're going to get the map flipped. And Fono Instinct could still come back in this matchup. Big win there for Doherty! Big win for Doherty! 49-46 here. Where is the next kill come? The beat down's there. One kill secured. And that's going to do it as Sanada will move forward and play in the grand finals here at level 50. That sword death was brutal. That's a heartbreaker right there. Yeah, that was uh, that was brutal. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that that was the kill that would that would change the outcome of the game because they were still down by like five or something like that at the time. It's potentially it's the potentially kill that flips the map. Yeah. Because they'd have numbers advantage at that point. Like obviously the team was already being pushed into a into the base. Mm -hmm. so that was unfortunate also that that roy death in the bottom of the at the bottom of the base was was bad too so it is what it is though yep just wow 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 so will with that in mind please give us this top four top four at level 50 here we go Fourth place went to Oats Overnight, which was Elamite, Ace, Neighbor, and Ghost Ayami. Third went to Final Instinct. We just saw them go down. Walshy, Strongside, Roy, and Lunch. Second was Xanada, Manas, Zilge, Doherty, and Crazy. And first went to LVT. Incredible run. Gunshot, Havoc, Khan, and Stormy. LVT composed of the all-star players from the Real Ones Discord com completed a perfect tournament run, not losing a single game. God damn. God damn. Indeed. Pure dominance. And they really did too. Like, obviously there were a couple close games. Like, don't get me wrong. Everyone's going to have a close game, but they didn't lose a single game all tournament. They had a lot of fucking blowouts too. Um, like, and they just, they're just absolutely dominant. They're just absolutely dominant. I, I forgot who it was on the broadcast, but uh, someone was on the broadcast talking about how the members of that LVT roster are all the captains that are like, the, they're the captains that are chosen in when they do the, um, when they do the drafts for the real ones uh, tournaments and stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. And so the fact that, the four captains came together to form that team. Like you knew that they were just going to be different and they really fucking were, they really fucking were. So congratulations to them. Not dropping a single map is massive. Also huge shout out to the community for like donating, um, to make that prize pool what it was, uh, just unfucking believable. Just un fucking believable you're the goat spring king thank you so much man thank you so much um the other thing i want to say as well um oh what's up gun goddess how's it going just saying the clip we love hs protect we love you <laughs> we love you i think final instinct could have taken a game off lvt i think uh not only final instinct white's edge but um Fucking <coughs> Xanada could have taken a game. 
you know. But they didn't. They did not. They did not. Real quick here, some additional information um, from the FFA Panda. He asks, I would love to see a ballpark of the financials needed to make this event possible. Puckett replied and says, follow Swift Kill and Proverb for details. It was basically $225,000. Tons of favors called in, free labor from passionate volunteers and critical roles across the board. I don't know how we pulled this off with the budget we did. The universe aligned everything for us. So guys, put that into perspective. $225,000 and that includes volunteer work. And a lot of it, I heard. $225,000. That's fucking crazy. So, wow. Just wow. Um... Natasha says it was so much fun. I hope they do it again. Oh man. That's so great. You say that, you know, what a great transition. What a great transition. It's so (laughs) great. You say that because, and of course I forgot to bring this fucking clip up because I'm a goddamn idiot. Give me one second here. And honest. So is a very, very short one, but, um, how about halo three? I didn't want to do it again, but I think we might have to when Halo 3 turns 20. We'll see you next time, all. Go ahead. So, yeah, for those who don't know, um, Halo 3's 20th anniversary is going to be coming up in just a few short years. So, would be pretty fucking sick. Martin says they put in their own money and lost a lot of money on the event. Couldn't respect them more for it. And and that's, that's the other thing too. Um, I'm going to repeat what I've said earlier. And I want to say one more time here to level 50 swift kill pocket Martin Ohms, AKA voodoo man in the chat right now. And every single other person that helped make this event something special. Thank you so fucking much. You could, like I said, you, you could feel the love. You could feel the passion through the broadcast and you all did an unbelievable job making this thing happen and really making it feel like it went off without a hitch. And Martin, to you and everybody else that was like refing, admining, whatever it may be, the thing that gets me is, and I mean this in, in like a really good way, like the thing that gets me is the amount of praise and the amount of respect that I saw you and everybody else receive online. It, everybody saying how flawless it was. Everybody saying they were they were so happy to have you back there, and just. This is going to sound cliche and stupid, but it warms my heart to hear that and see that because we know the amount of work that you've done and we know, th- we know the amount of work that you've, that you do for other scenes and to see you come back and do it for this. It's just <laughs> kind of at a loss for words to be completely honest. Like halo three was my game. I'm wearing the fucking hoodie right now. And that was, that wasn't intentional, but like halo three was my game. And, and hopefully if we get one of these things in the next few years, but just to see this and see all this love and support for a game that came out 20 fucking years ago. And not only that, but see the level of competition that we had for this. I just, it, it felt like a fucking melee event. That's what it felt like. It felt like a smash melee event. And again, I mean that in the best way possible. It was just passion. It was just pure fucking passion. So again, to everybody involved in making this thing happen, thank you. And man, do I wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Will, is there anything you want to add? No, I think you said it all. Incredible event for the community. Glad that it was able to happen. Bring kind of those vibes back from that era of Halo. Let's see if it happens for H3. I can only hope. I Here's the thing, though, Will. I swear to God, like, going back and playing before the servers got shut down was very rough. Sure. So, like, I that'd be a thing that I'm, like, maybe there's a lot of, like, rose-tinted glasses situation happening here. And if you, this is coming from somebody who adores that game. Like, Halo 3 is still probably my favorite. Um, But I am... Maybe if we have the whole shebang, right? We have 360s, obviously. We have, like, CRTs. Um, or not even, like, not even CRTs, but I'm talking, like, not non-4K televisions. Right. So, you know what I mean? Like, not not modern technology that we have today, basically. I'm curious how it would perform because it, I'm telling you, man, playing that game right before servers were shut down, it was not a fun experience. So, oh my God. Um, real quick here. Verb asked, Josh, explain the LVT dudes. They just play Halo 2 for the last 10 years. So they, um, like I said, they're part of a real ones, the real ones, um, discord clan group. And yeah, they hold, they hold Halo 2 lobbies all the time and they, they do tournaments uh, I believe they do eights and yeah, they're just a, a group of, a group of folks who fucking have a massive passion for Halo two and are just keeping it alive and they play all the time. And so when they, when they saw that they, that he, they, Jesus Christ, I'm stumbling over my goddamn words. I'm sorry. When they saw the event was announced, they just put in the fucking work as they have been. And you saw what happened. But yeah, shout out to them. Shout out to the real ones. Also, the other thing I want to add here, Will, I want to make a comparison here. And not, and this isn't in a negative sense. This is in a comparison sense. Okay. I want to make a comparison between Halo 2 and Halo Infinite. Because obviously a lot of folks that may listen to this show, they they may not be versed like well versed in the old MLG days of halo two, halo three, whatever it may be. Right. They, maybe they tuned in when we started with halo five, maybe they started tuning in with infinite, whatever it may be. Things are definitely different now. And people could say for better, people could say for worse, but here's a comparison I want to make. And here's a reason I want to say that I'm thankful for the updates and the changes that have been made to, um, these competitive modes for infinite specifically. And the kind of the, the main example I'm going to use here is oddball, right? Where in halo two, excuse me. And in halo three is that with oddball, you would have a set time on the game clock, right? And that game clock would just keep ticking, keep on ticking, keep on ticking. Doesn't matter if the person's holding the ball, drop the ball, forgets to play the ball. Uh, you know, the game clock just keeps ticking. The, not going to say issue because it was never really an issue, but it was something that had been improved upon for infinite is that the, what happened in halo two and halo three is that you would have many instances and you could see it many a time in this halo two land that happened over the weekend where it would just be simply mathematically impossible for a team to come back and win the game because they'd be so far down in time. And then either the game would be ended prematurely because they're just simply not enough time or they would just sit there and wait until the game clock finished. And so the thing that I appreciate with infinite is that they made the change to where that is not able to happen anymore. You, a team always has the opportunity to fight back and to win the game or the win the round, whatever it is. Because for those who, again, just to make sure everybody understands for those who don't know with infinite, as long as a team is holding the ball, the game clock stops. It is paused. The game clock only ticks down as long as the ball is not being held. Okay. And then the same thing can be said in terms of King of the Hill. And I know we didn't see that, you know, this event, but it's just another comparison to make. So 
I am thankful for the for the updates and the changes that we've received in Infinite because I feel like I love the opportunity that every team is able to make a comeback or any it, no matter what it, it's always going to come down to the wire. So I'm very appreciative of that. Um, Uzi Gorilla and Cadfax, thank you guys for the follows. Greatly appreciated. And Natasha, thanks you, thanks you, thank you for the additional ten bits. Uh, Century says it's also fun to see a team try to make a comeback with like five seconds left on the clock. Agreed. Agreed. All right. I am dying over here. Um, brackets and VODs included in the Google Doc of the show. It's the show. Um, again, that's all brackets. So the CE2v2, the FFA, and the championship bracket, and then all the streams, both from Puckett and LVT, are on the Google Doc of the show notes of the show. Make sure to check those out if you haven't already. Go watch some unbelievable Halo 2 that was played just this last weekend. And Will, let's get into some regular news. First up, Halo Infinite Winter Update 2024. The patch notes are available. Go check those out if you haven't already. Then we have Halo Age of Retribution by Halo Studios. Go check it out. Halo 2, the 20th anniversary blog post that they put out from Halo Studios. Go check that out on Waypoint. Um, kind of the big things to take away from that are like a lot of developer insights, um, like their thoughts about Halo 2. Then we have Halo 2 is a classic, but its development was a mess. Uh, this is by Alyssa Mercante for Rolling Stone. Go check that article out. And then probably the biggest release that happened because of the Halo 2 20th anniversary. We have Dig Site Demos, Halo 2. This is by Halo Studios. It's a Waypoint article. I'm going to read you the two things that they've released. First up, E3 2003, Earth City. At E3 in 2003, over 21 years ago now, a gameplay demo for Halo 2 was shown for the first time to the world. The city of New Mombasa on Earth is under attack by the Covenant, and the Master Chief has flown in to join the fight alongside Marines and ODSTs with a new arsenal namely a single-shot battle rifle and dual-wieldable SMGs. New vehicles, new enemies, and a whole new look. Alas, this mission was never a part of Halo 2's retail release. During the 2024 World Championship, we replayed this demo on an original Xbox dev kit before announcing that the intrepid dig site crew had been finishing up work on rebuilding this demo as a playable level. The fruits of their labor, labor are now available to everybody with MCC on PC. Massive improvements have been made to the visual quality and overall stability of this experience, as the original demo required the player to hit specific indiv individual triggers in order to ensure it did not break. Players will see that nav markers help to guide them through each beat of this mission, from the moment they step off the pelican all the way up to boarding the ghost and escaping into the highway tunnel at the end. So you go check it out if you haven't already. Again, it's available via uh, MCC on PC. You can check it out via the Steam Workshop. And then finally... Alpha Moon. Originally, things were a little different. Um, they would have escaped the gas mine, and the Arbiter would have to pursue him on uh, to Basis, one of the moons of Threshold. Fighting through heretic forces on the surface of the moon amidst the shattered remains of the Halo Ring, the Arbiter's final showdown with Refume, or Refumi, I've, I'm an idiot and don't know his name, would have taken place in the ruins of the control room. This mission has been rebuilt from existing tags and is now playable. Note, however, that the showdown, showdown was only finished to a blockout stage and is not included in this reconstruction. The last meeting notes of this mission are dated August 2003, and the mission appears to have been cut shortly thereafter as references to it are scrubbed by February of 2004. The main issues that led to Alpha Moon's removal were problems with light mapping, difficult to solve even with modern hardware, lack of environmental variation, and negative playtester feedback on the encounters. As this mission was still in heavy revision, when it was cut, you may encounter glitches and bugs. Additionally, the audio for Alpha Moon was, a place, was all placeholder recordings. It was ultimately decided that the dig site team would re-record the dialogue to match the last script version we had. We even used the same audio processing change that Bungie did to replicate the elite voices. Alpha Moon will be available on November 15th. So keep an eye out on the Steam Workshop. That's it for the, nice. for the regular news. Got our games, watch!
One thing for you here, Will. Ranked play. I'm not going to read the entire portion of the ranked play because it's fucking massive. So I just have a couple yeah. little a couple little pieces here for you. And if anybody wants to go read the rest of it, it's in the show notes of the show. The link is. Black Ops 6 ranked play launch window. The definitive ranked play experience that Treyarch have been building towards since Call of Duty Vanguard and throughout the lifespan of MW2 and MW3 is coming to Season 1, starting on November 21st. Expect a full rules breakdown in the Black Ops 6 patch notes closer to ranked play launch. And for the overview and features, just a brief snippet here. The core tenets of ranked play remain the same. You're here to play competitive multiplayer matches using using the same settings, maps, modes, and weapon restrictions as the CDL. Black Ops 6 ranked play comes with several streamlined features, innovations, and updates. And again, you can read through all of it um, via the link in the show notes of the show. All right. Now, (laughs) it's time for... What's up, PD? Hi, PD. It's time for Will's Adventures of the Nail Overs and other games, too. Will. Yeah. Will, uh, I am going to run to the bathroom real quick, but All I right. am, I'm excited to hear about that horrible IRL stream because I was able to tune in for a brief sec. Well, you, got, <laughs> you guys are playing Rockman. So, yeah. yeah, I'm excited to hear how things went. But uh, please, tell the folks what's going on. I'll be right back. All right, we'll start off with Infinite. Obviously, doing HRL. You got to give a little correction to last week because I was kind of down in the dumps about the HRL team. It was all on me. I needed to change the mindset. Came back the next week, better mindset. We won our match. It was great. It was fun. Shout out to Alflin, Ashley, and Joey who filled in for us. It was amazing. PD, yeah, you... You, you, uh, I'll talk about it when Josh gets back, but that IRL, IRL stream was bad. Um, we did have a makeup match that we ended up losing kind of went downhill quick, but it was, um, it is what it is. We are two and three now with three weeks left to playoffs. So we'll hopefully make another run here at the end and get going. But yeah, it's, um, it's crazy how much a mindset just slightly can affect your game. And I was like, you know what? I just get out of the dumps, stop being negative and go for it. It was a good time. It was a good time. Damn it. How long is Josh going to take in the bathroom now? Oh, he's back. Shit. Not long. Relax. (laughs) I'm back. All right. Uh, Sorry guys. Describing HRL stuff. So, uh, going better, change my mindset, feeling better, playing better. Love basically that. Basically what it comes down to. Love that. Um, so this rock band stream. Yeah. I was at my buddy Joey's house, obviously. Yes. And I was like, you know what? I don't. Was that his roommate? This? Um, the, no. The guy, so when, so there was three of us to start. Yeah. That's not his, a former roommate. You still live Got there. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, the fourth guy that showed up like an hour or something into the stream was is his room one of his roommates. Now. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Halt. The bass was pumping. I feel like we've figured it out a little bit, but then. As the night went on and Joey became less sober, the volume kept getting turned up and oh, no. up and up and blowing out the sound even more. Oh, no. I'm like, dude, why did we spend a half hour setting up this stream? Fuck it. Anyway, it was a good time. Uh, <laughs> I hope whoever tuned in enjoyed it for what it was because it was just us hanging out, having a few beers, playing rock band. And... Uh, the chat interaction was really bad because like I, I watched it. I would walk over to the computer and interact with chat. And then on my phone, it, that would happen like four minutes later okay. on the stream. So like I tried to interact, but it was, it was difficult. Um, his, he kept dropping frames. Even like internet wasn't good. We were on Wi-Fi, no way to hot hardwire in. 
and just a lot of devices. All those guys are gamers that live at that house. So a lot of devices hogging up internet. <laughs> so we even like tried to go to some of them and like switch the frequencies so the stream would be better. Mm -hmm. We did what we could. We did what we could. Yeah, Joey broke the stream at one point too. He, he started fiddling with the camera. Jesus Christ. Trying to do camera settings and stuff and it like froze the audio because the audio, all we had was the camera and had to restart the stream. And I was just like, just leave it alone, dude. But it was a good time. I hope whoever saw enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, that's all I played this week. All right. So I'm just adding a couple things to the to the show notes because I forgot and I'm a fucking moron. Thanks, Cass. I appreciate that. I try. All right. There we go. Um, real quick, because I forgot to say it during the topic of the show. Uh, the player awards were also given for the level 50 land and they are uh, your best slayer was stormy best IGL was Zildjian best objective was strong side and best play went to gore. So congratulations to you guys on the player awards. As for what I played, will um, just a couple things here, played some infinite, just been playing some firefight finished up the, the event pass. Um, I am, I know you are well in onyx now in terms of career rank, uh, yeah. but uh, your boy here, is like three or four games away from finally getting in diamond. So, oh boy, I know, oh my God, I'm so fucking dude, jazzed, it's, dude. It's it's a little like Halo Five though. Once you get to on, like Onyx, oh, it takes as long as it takes you to get to Onyx. It feels like so. Yep. So Ooh. I'm uh yeah, I'm, it's I just keep looking at it and I'm like, man, every step closer. I'm like, man, should I go for it? And I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna fucking go for it. But there's where I'm at career rank wise. Um, but also still playing Dragon Age, the Veil Guard. I'm um, having a good time with that. Uh, found a couple different build possibilities that I've been tinkering with. So I'm having a good time there. Um, I beat a, no, great. Uh, granted, I'm not playing on like a hard difficulty or anything like that because I just, I just want to experience the game. Um, but I, I did fight a, uh, like a mini boss. Yeah. Gun Goddess. I saw you fucking post that on Twitter. You, you just fucking you just went you went for it you my god my <laughs> god like that's a fucking that's a 50 60 hour game will and she like goddamn congratulations to you you played it on hard too yeah not me not your boy not me um but no i beat a boss like a mini boss um that was like 10 or 15 levels above me and now granted i'm not playing on the easiest difficulty um yeah, I beat like a mini boss that was like 10 to 15 levels higher than me. And the the weapon that was in the chest after the fact is just unbelievably better than anything else that I've gotten. Oh yeah. So yeah, I've just been basically sticking with that. It's it's like a it's um they they do rarities, right? And okay. this is like a pink weapon, which I'm assuming is like their like, ep their version of an epic or Yeah, like top tier. Yeah, yeah. So Yeah. I thought that was really cool. So that's what I've been fucking with so far. And yeah, that's, I, I like it. I'm having a good time so far. I think, I think some of the writing is meh, but, um, there have been some times where I've genuinely like laughed out loud based off of some of the comments back and forth between these characters. And there are characters that I do appreciate and do enjoy. So I'm excited to keep playing that. It's going to be a good time. Awesome. Awesome. Um, the dragons are so much harder if you aren't the same level as them. Wait a second. Wait, you fight dragons in Dragon Age? No way. That's bullshit. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I'm I'm genuinely excited to fight um against some goddamn dragons. But no, right now, basically how I play the game is um I do a main story mission, right? And then that would more than likely unlock like side missions to do or side quests. I'll go through, do the side quests, do the side content. Um then as soon as I exhaust all that, I go back to the main story, continue that. And that's kind of how I'm playing. We'll see how it goes. All right. Yeah. I'm, like I said, I'm having a good time so far. It, it runs very well on PC. Um, it's, it's optimized very well. 
And so I'm very happy about that. I have yet to play it on Steam Deck. I do have it installed and ready to go, but I have yet to actually attempt to play it on Steam Deck. I My expectations are 30 FPS. Like, that's where I'm at with that. And then we'll see. Did you ever find out how old the dragon is? You know, it's a great question. In a, in a game called Dragon Age, that that's... Great question, Ronan. Are you, I fucking hate you sometimes. Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, Diode says to Riz, I'm going to tell your woman you're still pl- paying for World of Warcraft. You know what's funny about that? Um, I re-upped my sub for a month. Like just literally a couple days ago, because I'm back, I'm back in that fucking mindset that I want to play an MMO again. And I don't know why, but I'm back in that fucking dumbass mindset. So I re up my sub for a month on, wow, I don't have it included here because I literally played for like a few minutes. Um, because I was going to roll a new character and all that shindiggy, but whatever, like if you, if you re up your sub, you get access to all the expansions, um, up until the war within the war within is the newest. So like you get dragon flight so you can fucking fly dragons and that sounds dope as shit. Um, but I haven't done it. <laughs> so instead, instead I repicked up guild wars two and I'm having a great time with that. So that's what I've been playing. I'm go. playing a lot of there fucking guild wars two. It's a good time. That, that game does some things. That game does some things fucking well. And there's no subscription fee. So, you know, pretty goddamn good. Pretty goddamn good. Riz says we can get an HTS Protoc Classic guild going. No. I mean, you can. Go ahead. Paulie says Guild Wars 2 has the same flight make flying mechanics as well for Dragonflight. And it, I believe it came out, what, three years earlier or something like that? I think Guild Wars 2 had flying a lot earlier than WoW. Like the dragon. The dragon stuff. Like those flying mechanics specifically. Obviously, flying in WoW has existed for fucking God knows how long at this point. But you know what I mean? HCS WoW Night? No, 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 no. HCS Guild Wars Night. HCS Guild Wars Night. Fuck this WoW shit. You know what I mean? Eh. But no, if you like WoW, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I am... Yeah. I, I want to dibble dabble back in it, but we'll see. Playing some Guild Wars 2 right now. That's all I've been playing. Let's get into some more fucking shoutouts. <laughs> Happy belated 10th birthday to the HCS. And I know I'm not feeling well right now, but I want to put this out there right here, right here, right now. Obviously, Will, we wouldn't be where we are today without this league. So, yeah. and the the fact that we have been a show for nearly seven of those 10 years of the HCS is pretty cool in my opinion. So... To everybody that has worked and works with the HCS or works for the HCS, thank you for everything that you guys do and have done and hopefully continue to do for the future. Because like I said, we wouldn't be here without the league and without the scene. So I know people have their criticisms, some of them rightfully so. But the fact of the matter is we do have an official league for this eSport. And it's always a it's always a pleasure and a privilege that we still get to have it. So thank you very much. Then we have happy belated 20th birthday to halo two. If you guys have not watched that tournament. Please do so happy belated birthday to golden boy, the national treasure himself. Happy belated birthday to you, sir. And then happy birthday to real life Spartan. Happy birthday to you. Shout out to everyone who joined in the eights that happened over the past week. Shout out to everyone who, well, actually, before I, before I shout out the, the follows and the subs and all that fun stuff, uh, Mr. Wiley Diode himself and Diode in the chat, I believe has created a server over on the discord. And uh, I see some eights channels in there, which makes me assume that there's going to be some eights lobbies going on in that server. Um, diode i have not received like a synopsis of the of the the why the server is there so if you wanted to give me like a little pitch you could put it in the show 
You know what I mean? But that's up to you. I just wanted to shout it out. I got the invite, joined it up, saw the channels in there. I'm excited for what you got cooking. All right? Then, shout out to everyone who followed and subbed during the live show. That includes Mr. Danny Phantom, 14-month resub, Dialed with the five gifted subs, Dart with the 26-month resub, Tyler with the four-month resub, Preppin with the two-month resub, Stumpy with the 11-month resub, and then we have um, I'm Trippy, Pauly, Uzi Gorilla, and Cadfax. Thank you all for the follows. Greatly appreciated. And Natasha, thank you for the bits throughout the show, too. Thank you so much. You all get a woo! Diode says, it's just for people to hang if they want to hang. I appreciate it. Well, hey, I appreciate how you have it all structured. You have it all beautifully set up. Thank you very much for, uh, you know, doing that. Oh, my God. All right. You good? No. And then she, you, need, you need me to take out the take the page. Oh no, I gotta get these going. You know what it is. All right, all right. Shout out to everyone who's a patron at the semi pro and higher tiers. That includes <laughs> Unbroken Soul, Hardy Class, Blackout, Watsy, D Pancakes, Ashley, Voodoo Man, Roster Monkey Jr., Stego, Raider, Hater, Peanut Butt, One Swole, Daddy. No, that fucking sucked. Daddy! Daddy Phantom. Rizex Arters, High Tech, Redneck, Goalie Sniper, the only need heavy rainfall and delayed in our board. Thank you so much for the extra support over on the Patreon. Ronan with the gifted sub. You get a woo! My voice is dying. Just kill that voice. Kill that, that voice. I'm killing it, dude. I, I went to the bathroom earlier, obviously, and I was like, just, as soon as be taken so much out of fucking context, I was just swallowing my spit. I was just swallowing my spit, and it just fucking hurts going down, man. It sucks. Oh. I told you it's going to be taken out of context, but there you go. It's just, my throat is like just raw right now. Community Creations, Halo Memes Every Day, Rad.com forward slash R forward slash Halo Memes. Go check it out. Quadrant Makes History, HCS 10-Year Anniversary by the HCS. It's a great video. Please go check that out. That that Quadrant run that they had at Arlington last year was just insane. Um, Peaks and Valleys, War Cry, Episode 5 by Native Gaming Halo. Go check that video out. You get to see Michael run. Yeah. That happened. <laughs> that was great. Next up, we have the Battlefront Pack trailer for Halo Reach. This is by the Battlefront Pack. It is a pack of uh, Star Wars Battlefront maps that are going to be included for MCC Reach on PC. So make sure to go check that trailer out if you haven't already. And then finally, announced today, as a matter of fact, Piggy is on Medify. So if you want to get some coaching sessions in by Piggy himself, go ahead and book them through Medify. Shout out. All right, well. That's all I fucking got. Do me a favor, plug this bitch so I can take some Advil and play some more Guild Wars 2. <laughs> all right, here we go. Find us on Patreon. Do a extra content for you guys I'll, over there. Video show, audio show, Q&As, whatever. Go check it out. See what we got cooking. As always, you can find us on your favorite podcast services. Just search for HES Pro Talk. We're on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, and others like Josh's favorite. Pocket cast, still not an ad. But hey, I did get champ rank earlier than they put it in Infinite, which it still doesn't fucking exist. If you want to find us anywhere else, we have a link tree, exclamation point link tree in chat. It'll send you to our Discord, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and our merch. Go check us out on all the sites. And then if you go to hsprotalk.com, you're not going to end up on hsprotalk.com. Spoiler alert. You'll go to haloevolve.co. Your home for Halo. So we long time ago, we partnered with the fine folks over at Podcast Evolve, and they're hosting our site over there. A long, long time ago. I can still remember. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Let's Make sure to check out HaloEvolve.co and their great shows such as Podcast Evolve, Mission Debrief, Halo TV Plus, Book Club Builds Blocks, Halo Headlines, and Halo Gear Guide. Go do it. Go. And Josh, that's all go. I got. Thank you, Will, as always. And uh, thank you for bearing with me here um, and doing you the show. Surprise, this like, I could have talked more tonight since you weren't, you, you just. Ran with it like normal. Sorry. I tried to do a normal show. My That's apologies. Fine. It's all good. But hey, I appreciate you like being flexible on doing this remote this week because like I said, yeah. it, it, I don't want like, I don't want you getting anything, you know, especially if the, the kid, this is the thing, right? For people with children, you'll know what I'm talking about is that 
that children go to daycare, they bring shit home. Children go to school, they bring shit home. Like my kids in kindergarten, right? This is this is prime fucking weather. This is prime time for the viruses to come home. My wife works in healthcare. She worked in she was working in pediatrics like a uh, last week. So God knows she brought something home too. It's just it is what it is, man. You gotta you just you roll with the punches. You just gotta fucking deal with it. Um, Ronan, Josh's sore throat voice uh, sounds like Will's IRL stream voice. That's funny. That's funny. I was gonna say like I've been trying to keep my tone down because I because of my throat hurting, and then the, the woos fucking they they've been rough today, man. They've been rough, like my fucking throat. Fucking raw, daddy. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for episode 364 of HCS Pro Talk. For those that are tuning in live, thank you so fucking much. Really appreciate it. Thank you for bearing with me this week. I already, Will, I already thanked you, but thank you again for bearing with me this week. Really do appreciate All good. it. All good. Um, to those that are tuning in on their favorite audio service or on YouTube, thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch or listen to the show. It is always greatly appreciated as well. And, um, yeah, Will, I don't have this in the show notes for like what's coming up on the next episode or whatnot, but I will say in the next two to three episodes, I'd say right before we, before we start gearing up for like preparations for the new year, the new season, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. we need to go back. We need to do a retrospective of the year. We need to have an episode, oh, yeah. right? We need to have an episode where we highlight the fucking amazing things that happened over 2024. Um, and then I think it would also kind of be fun. Maybe if we did like a, a 10 year celebration as well, you know, looking for HCS. Ba- yeah. Looking back at the last 10 years and just uh, talking about our favorite moments, so on and so forth. Kind of have a couple chill shows. So, okay. Yeah. Not, not saying exactly when they're going to happen. I just think we should at some point in time and yeah. So stay tuned for those. Stay tuned for those. All right. We'll be back next week. Talk about whatever we decide to talk about. Y'all have a great fucking night. Have a great week. We'll catch you next time. But until then, I got to make sure I'm clicked in the right spaces before I click these buttons that I'm inevitably going to (laughs) fucking suck at. All right. I got to hit you with a mind freak before we get out. So uh, here's that. We'll be back next week. Talk about who knows what, but stay tuned for that. But until then, bye-bye.